Did you know that you can combine a computer with an NVIDIA GPU with something like a Raspberry Pi to create one cluster that allows you to run AI models faster? Exo allows you to achieve just that, combining the hardware capabilities of local devices in your network. My name is Sen. I'm a software and AI engineer, and today we're going to see if this technology actually works and what the limitations are. Let's get into it. The way that this works is I have a Docker Compose file and I'm actually going to run this all on one PC. The trick here, though, is that I'm going to split up my GPU power. So we have one node running here, which is going to use only a slight percentage of the total CUDA threads available, which basically means that I'm only giving it a sliver of the full potential of my GPU. And then it's going to run EXO with a couple of ports, and one of these ports will allow me to access a web interface to chat with an AI. Later on, we're going to add a second node, and this node has no further restrictions on the GPU. So we will hopefully see the amount of tokens generated per second increase and thus get faster AI responses. But for now, we're going to go ahead and uncomment this because I want to show you a baseline. So the regular performance that we can expect with this specific environment that we're running here. So I'm going to just run Docker compose up and then it's going to start the container so you can see here that it's starting to download a model and the model that it's going to download is a 1 billion parameter version of llama 3.2 so that's actually a very simple and small language model that you could probably even run on the cpu so here comes the first token and give it a second it's going to get started now. So uh, the amount of tokens that we get per second needs a little bit of time to properly build up. But eventually we should see that I guess it will land around two tokens per second. So after letting the model generate for a while, you can see that it's basically hovering around 2.1 tokens per second. And you can see that it's taking a long time to generate an output. Now, again, I've kind of hampered my own environment on purpose. This is a very small language model, so it should really run a lot faster. The point of this exercise is to show that with this program, you can add more capacity from a different device and then get a faster response. So let's go ahead and try to achieve that. I'm going to stop the program from running now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to include this second node. So I'm gonna uncomment this. And again, this node will have access to more hardware resources. It's technically running on my machine, but because I'm running it in Docker, it's kind of as if it was its own separate machine. So you can kind of imagine that these are like two separate laptops. And a practical use case of this is that you can, for example, have a work MacBook that you uh, might be able to combine with a gaming PC. And the gaming PC, of course, might have an NVIDIA GPU, while the MacBook has an M chip. And so the idea, of course, is that you can combine the hardware of both devices. Let's actually test this in practice. So I'm going to go and actually do Docker Compose down to properly get rid of the running containers and network so we can start from scratch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Docker Compose up again. So now I'm going to refresh that localhost web page. And you will see that in the network topology, we currently just have one, but there you go. There's our second node. And you can see that these nodes are connected over ethernet. So in a practical use case, what you do need is you need the devices to be connected over ethernet, ideally, because you want them to be able to exchange information as quickly as possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paste the exact same prompt and then we're going to submit this. And now you're going to see one very interesting thing. So you know how we downloaded the model before a couple of minutes ago? Well, because I did Docker Compose down and I'm not saving the models to a volume, I actually have to re-download the model, but it's going to download it twice because you need to download models to each node that you create. And this is one unfortunate reality. You don't just have to download it on each of the nodes, but you also need to be able to load in the model on each of the nodes in full. What I mean by this is that this is a model that has a size of around 2.3 gigabytes, and it probably requires you to have at least five, six gigabytes of RAM or VRAM to properly run the model. 
So unfortunately, this means that every node that you have needs to have that amount of memory as well. This means that you can't just throw 10 Raspberry Pis at it if the Raspberry Pis on an individual basis don't have enough memory to run the model in the first place. So that's really an unfortunate reality. And it's really one of the problems that doesn't make this very practical. But before we get into limitations, let's actually have a look at whether this even works. So we just loaded the model in for both of the nodes. And now we're going to see the response being created, hopefully at a faster pace. So with this setup, we're actually seeing that we get a pretty similar response, but we get a much faster response speed. We get 3.6 tokens per second at the moment. And that's more than a 50% increase compared to what we had before. So that's really great. And you can see how this can scale well if you have three or four devices with extra hardware capacity. So what's interesting here is that as the response goes on, the amount of tokens per second is still creeping up a bit, which is great. And to understand better how the program is distributing the different parts of the response to the different nodes, we can actually have a look at the terminal here. And you can see that at this moment, it's sending a bunch of tensors to ABC node. And that is our second node. You can also see that if we scroll up, we should be able to see index zero, which is our first node. So you can keep track of when the program is sending different parts of the request handling to different nodes. And this is great for debugging, of course, but it also shows you that it's actually distributing the work, which is good to confirm, of course. What you just saw was a best case scenario for EXO, but I'm going to be completely honest. It took me several hours to actually get to this point and create this content for you because it was difficult to get EXO working the way that developers intended to work. EXO tries to solve a very difficult problem, orchestrating hardware where the hardware can differ from each other completely. For example, combining an NVIDIA GPU machine with a MacBook with an M chip. So to tackle this huge problem, the team seems to be focused on MacBook compatibility. On the one hand, I think it's a good idea because a lot of people have MacBooks nowadays and the M chips are pretty powerful. On the other hand, not a lot of people have two or more MacBooks just sitting there in their household network doing nothing at all. So I find it to be a little bit of a strange focus when the idea is to combine a lot of small, simple local devices to create a more powerful cluster. In addition to that, what I found a little bit surprising is that I couldn't really get CPU-only inference to work. And this was a little bit disappointing to me because I figured, well, I do have quite a lot of devices that have CPUs. They don't have GPUs, but they certainly have CPUs that are just sitting here doing nothing. But I found it very difficult to orchestrate them together. And EXO does point this out where if you try to combine a lot of weaker hardware together because of all of the networking overhead, you're not going to get great performance. But this would be really something that I would love to see improved on in the next coming years. In any case, I do applaud the EXO team. They're trying to solve a difficult problem. So I recommend you to check out their GitHub repository. And I hope to see you in the next video where we will explore more technologies like this.